questions. Can you also uh, uh, message the WhatsApp group and tell them that we are about to go live? Uh, okay, let's have a look. Connect streaming software to go live. And I am getting nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Hey guys, uh, I don't know if anyone's tuning in, but just give me a second. While as usual, we try and sort out that missing link between... I'm, on, I'm up on the page. Hi guys, thanks for joining me. And everything looks like it's set up okay. And say hello, let me know where you're watching from. I'm just going to pin this to the top of my page for the moment. And Paul is going to, I guess, copy that video link into the event. Have you got the event up on your end, Paul? I do. I'm busy now. Okay, cool. Uh, and then... Hopefully it works okay. Uh, thanks again so much everyone for joining me and we'll just uh, give a couple more minutes until uh, everyone's settled. Uh, it's uh, we're three minutes from officially starting live. Let me just go and have a look and share it on my own Facebook profile as well. That would help. And um, say hello and let me know where you're watching from. And also uh, let me know if you own a Thermomix, especially a TM6 or if you are interested in earning one and I can see a few people hopped on now but again thanks again for joining me just give me two seconds while I share this to my own Facebook timeline uh, it's not letting me do that okay let me just copy the link copy link and then hop onto my Facebook page and today what we're going to be making we're going to be making Rodi Chanai and Dao per request uh, per, per, per the polling that I ran in my brand new WhatsApp Facebook, not WhatsApp, WhatsApp Thermomix uh, TM6 community. I created a small little community just a couple of days ago and uh, in my last broadcast I invited you guys to join me if you want to engage with me about the Thermomix uh, TM6 that I have actually just acquired very very recently. And I'm going to pull it over. Clearly, I'm a little bit disorganized, but today uh, Noah is actually around. For those of you who don't know, Noah is my child who's got Down syndrome and he is non-verbal. And it's the school holidays and today he's home with us. So he's going to be probably showing his face at some point. But here we go. This is my Thermomix TM6. And uh, yeah, those of you who have been watching my live cooking broadcast will know that for the longest time, for as long as I've lived in this apartment actually, I've had this TM5 in the background every now and then I get some expressions of interest about like what it is, how I use it and all that sort of stuff and I usually kind of give a very brief introduction and um, kind of thing but it's very very heavily integrated into a lot of my cooking um, that I do, right? So for the first time ever though, I am going to be doing this, uh, I'm going to be creating specific content about the Thermomix and in particular about the TM6, okay? Uh, why the TM6 over the TM5? It's because it does have other features that the TM5 did not have. Nonetheless, for seven years, I was quite happy using the TM5, so it does have a lot of functionality. Uh, but this one has others that, um, that a lot of people are not aware of, myself included, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to make roti chanai, and if you don't know what roti chanai is, it's a flat, bread, uh, Malaysian flat bread that's um, flipped to the way you flip a pizza and then fold it up and then cooked, right? So uh, when I was first introduced to a Thermomix, uh, you know, when I was approached about possibly checking it out, uh, I had no idea what a Thermomix was and I said, oh, what, does it bake for you? No, it doesn't bake for you, okay? But it does do things uh, that kind of, you know, it does... Um, either parts of a recipe or the entire recipe from start to finish, depending on what it is that you're cooking. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, instances of this today, okay? So roti chanai, like I said, is a flat flaky bread that's going to be flipped. Um, but, you know, when you to make the bread, you've got to make the dough, okay? And back in the day, obviously, you would make the dough by hand. Uh, and I, 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 every time I watch YouTube videos, you know, people like to show you how to make things by hand from start to finish and you, you, you watch it and you think, oh wow, that's a lot of skill. And then you think, oh, that's a lot of time. And then you think, oh, well, that's a bit of a mess. You know, if I was doing this in my home kitchen, I would have flour flying everywhere and I would spend like, you know, two hours cleaning up afterwards, you know. So it's never really uh, uh, conducive to making me want to go and try it. You know, it's kind of like good uh, theory and whatever. 
And then at the, in the mid-range, you would have your typical traditional dough mixer, of which I have one, all right? A dough mixer, you know, with the bowl and a couple of different attachments and stuff like that. So you can make your roti canai dough in that as well, which was what I used to do when I had my restaurant back in, uh, you know, about 10 years ago. Um, but um, again, you know, because the dough mixer has an open like top, right or even when it's got like the protective cover it doesn't it's not like airtight or anything like that right so you still have flour flipping out and stuff like that i remember my big giant dough mixer in my restaurant always had like caked up flour even bits of dough that get you know flipped out and end up getting stuck along around the sides of the bowl or the machine and whatever so it can get a little bit messy as well um, and then finally we've got the thermomix okay uh, thermomix also does kneading for you so this is one of the many many functions of a thermomix the thermomix does kneading for you and the reason why i like using the thermomix for kneading is because you know once it's a closed system it needs more effectively and more efficiently uh, so you know something that might need 10 minutes of kneading right in a dough mixer you only do it for like maybe half the time okay um, that's an example um, now I'm going to use both my thermomixers today because I don't want to spend three hours with this session uh, I've got somewhere to go in an hour so we're going to fast track this a little bit uh, so what we're going to do, because we're making the vegetarian dal dip as well, right? Uh, we're going to actually uh, use my TM5 as well to help this along, okay? So first of all, um, just to show you some of the functionalities of the Thermomix, we're going to get started making the um, making uh, the dal first, okay? I know it's a little bit um, kind of like... Uh, counterintuitive to be doing that and by the way say hello I, I'm, I'm not reading the comments at the moment I can't see your comments at the moment at some point Paul is going to come and help me out and then hopefully between uh, between Paul and I we may be able to actually see some of the uh, comments and so post your questions even if you don't see your comments uh, post your questions anyway and I'll go back uh, later on today when I have a bit of time this is Noah when I have a little bit of time and I can engage with you then okay so say, say hello monkey <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Now, the dal. Okay, I, I, I want to mention, and Paul's just getting uh, aproned up over there. I want to mention with the dal, right? Uh, there are a lot of ingredients that go into dal. That's the downside, okay? The upside is that it's very, very easy to make. And I'm going to actually take some shortcuts. Even though we're using a Thermomix, because we're short on time, I'm going to take some shortcuts, okay? Uh, so let me just grab some of the ingredients. Okay, this is one of the shortcuts that we're, we're, we're taking, okay? This is actually a uh, fried onion, okay? Uh, fried onion, you can buy them at Asian grocery stores. You can buy them at IKEA, ironically. Uh, this is a uh, tamarind concentrate, okay? Uh, I buy this in its concentrate form. Obviously, a lot of people tend to buy them in pulp and then they boil them, but you can do it in a thermomix and then you strain it and then you, you squeeze it out and all that sort of stuff. Now, because we're making a, ve a vegetarian, actually it's vegan as well, version of this, I'm using some seasoning, which is uh, mushroom seasoning, okay? If you've seen my previous broadcast, you, you know, you might have noticed I use a chicken seasoning, a chicken stock granules. This is actually the vegan vegetarian equivalent of it, except this doesn't have MSG, which is fantastic, right? Uh, but it kind of gives body to your dal. Now, uh, our ingredients we need are... Uh, can you get me uh, yes. my uh, 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 the potato over there? Okay, so we've got a couple of tomatoes over here, and more stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the ingredients are going to be a little bit like you know, like I said, there are a lot of ingredients that go into this, and this is actually the recipe from my restaurant. So it does work. It's not on time to say. In fact, I had an Indian uh, follower of mine contact me one time because uh, I've posted this recipe before, and they said like you know they tried it and it's just spot on. Okay, so don't worry about this seeing a little bit iffy if I use a fried onion and stuff like that. Okay, like I said, I'm just trying to short tra uh, short track this, but that's how I used to do it in my restaurant as well. Other ingredients. Okay, uh, green chilies. These are actually frozen green chilies. Okay. Curry leaves from my garden, from my balcony garden, okay? Uh, 
I'm going to send out the recipes to you guys, so don't worry about trying to take too many notes right now. Uh, just try and absorb what I'm trying to tell you, okay? Which, you know, writing recipes and uh, actually uh, talking about it in person or on camera, uh, you, you pick up different information, so there's different, em you know, emphases and stuff like that, okay? Now, this is where it gets complicated. Let's just try and like uh, switch the camera over to the overhead and hopefully this is not too distorted, okay? Uh, you might be able to just catch a glimpse of my uh, Lenovo here, my Lenovo laptops where I'm live streaming from. So thank you Lenovo for the, uh, uh, the opportunity to be able to live stream using these tools, okay? So these ingredients, okay, you may or may not be familiar with uh, all of them, okay? These are mustard seeds, okay? These are fenugreek. This is a uh, actually garlic granules. Okay, the garlic granules that are uh, usually you would use fresh garlic. Okay, I'm cheating here. I'm using garlic granules. They're more flavorsome than like bottled garlic. Okay, bottled garlic, bottled minced garlic usually yeah, like is kind of preserved in something like acidic, so it kind of ruins the flavor. But this does not um, have any kind of like uh, weird stuff added to it. Okay, so it's is good and you can reconstitute it like by adding water uh, and then it will smell not quite like fresh garlic but close enough this is just salt this is cumin okay usually you would use um, cumin seeds and then you'll roast it okay and this is turmeric and this ingredient okay this is probably the one that you may have trouble with okay this is something called asphatida a-s-a-f-o-e-t-i-d-a -A -E asphatida okay like i said don't worry too much about like all the information here i will be sending out your recipe as long as you're in my email community and in my whatsapp Therm thermomix tm6 community i will send out the recipe and you will get it okay uh but asphatida this was actually uh something that was uh recommended to me by my Indian worker back when I had my restaurant, I had this wonderful Indian um, uh, girl who used to work for me and she was the one who recommended it to me and uh, the other thing she recommended to me was using this type of dal, this type of lentil is called tor dal, T-O-R or T-O-O-R, okay, both tor dal and asatida, Indian grocery shops uh, in Australia should carry them quite easily, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, before I started using Tor Dao, I used to use Chana Dao, okay? So whatever Dao you use, uh, it, it should be okay, okay? Some people might use chickpea, okay? Uh, but I started out using Chana Dao. Um, she told me to try Tor Dao and I've stuck with Tor Dao since. And you notice this is wet because I soaked this overnight, okay? If you were using the Thermomix, you can soak it in the Thermomix or, you know, you can cook it longer if you like, okay? But we are not soaking anything today. And the other ingredients that we're using are tomatoes and uh, potato. Okay, so we're going to, first of all, actually really just boil the potato. That's the one thing that's going to take a little bit of time. I'm going to cut it into smaller chunks, okay? And you know, notice this our potato. It doesn't have a thick skin or anything like that. If you were using those un unbrushed potatoes, you can actually use the Thermomix. It's got an attachment that you've got to buy separately. That will help you like to wash the potatoes and, and and peel them okay i'm not doing that i just use i'm just using these uh, potatoes and i don't peel them as you can see okay so i'm just going to cut this into small chunks right so we have a comment from annie hi jackie no and paul it's 2 a.m here uh, i'm doing my best to <laughs> oh poor annie thanks so much for tuning in annie love to have you <laughs> and uh dixie live hey, thanks dixie. for the update jackie and paul hey it lovely helps. to have you dixie <laughs> And okay, so I've got the potatoes and I'm going to just boil them in my thermomix, okay? So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get the basket, the simmering basket. Okay, so if you have a TM5, right? Uh, the TM6's basket is slightly different in that it's got a lid. Okay, so that's the main difference. I'm going to chuck these in here. Okay, so my Thermomix, I'm going to chuck the water in here. Uh, Paul, would you mind just getting me some more water? Okay, okay you can fill this up if you don't mind. Okay, and then we're going to chuck this in here, okay? So we're going to, uh, I need a bit more water to boil this. And then because this is already in a basket, we can just strain out the water afterwards. We're going to save the water that we're straining out, okay? You can obviously also actually just 
uh, steam it, okay, but we're going to boil it today. So I'm just waiting for the uh, water to come over from home and what happened to the lip? Okay, here we go. Now, uh, the, back to the, uh, okay, first of all, tamarind concentrate. Now, um, a, a very, very important person in Malaysia who <laughs> used to talk to me quite a lot about cooking, right? She actually recommended the, uh, in lieu of tamarind concentrate, she recommended, oopsies. <laughs> she actually recommended using uh, tamarind powder, okay? This is the tamarind st uh, stock powder that you get with um, when you're making the uh, tamarind soup, you know, Filipino tamarind soup, right? I can't remember what it's called, but you can buy the, that at Asian grocery stores. And she says that works really, really well as well. So if you can't get a hold of tamarind concentrate, these come like in like you know in jars at Asian grocery stores. So it's already extracted for you. Uh, now we're just gonna cook this up. Let me just set the time, say 10 minutes, okay. Okay, and let it go. Okay, so uh, like I said, three different ways to get this uh, tamarind concentrate. First of all, buying the tamarind pulp with or without seed. Uh, you can boil it in here, in that basket, like what I'm doing with the potatoes, and then just strain it out, and then you want to basically squeeze out the, um, the, the, the pulpy, juicy bit, okay? And you will end up with something like this, and then use that and discard the pulp and all the fibers, okay? Now, the other way is to buy it pre-done for you, and I'll just let me show you what it looks like. This is one example of a, I keep thinking I have an overhead camera. This is an example of a, you know, tamarind concentrate that you can buy at Asian grocery stores. Now I'm going to warn you, different brands, right, uh, uh, of these tamarind concentrate come in different levels of like um, intensity of flavor, different levels of thickness, okay. There was one time I bought one in lieu of this that was actually tamarind paste. Um, and I was running a big cooking workshop at the time. There were like about 20 people in my cooking workshop and they were using this tamarind paste in lieu of tamarind concentrate because the tamarind paste, frankly, were actually uh, made, um, supplied to us by a, uh, a distributor, a brand distributor, and they wanted to try out their, their, their product. And without testing it beforehand, I just kind of like, okay, we're using this today instead of the other one. Didn't tell anyone anything else about it. And the food ended up tasting very, very sour, okay? Because, like I said, you know, it was so much more intense and so much more concentrated. Now, so just keep your eyes peeled, you know, when it says tamarind concentrate, taste it a little bit so you kind of gauge how sour or how diluted it is, then you know how much to use, okay? So the whole concept of agak, agak in Malaysian cooking comes into play here. So there's that, and then of course, like I said, this VVIP, I don't want to mention her name because it, I don't want to sound like I'm name dropping, but she suggested when she was uh, living in England um, that she used to use this um, tamarind powder, okay? Like I said, it's actually not straight pure tamarind powder, but it's almost like these instant um, sour soups. I can't remember for the life of me what it's called. Uh, but Malaysia has a version of it as well, but it's very, very popular among the Filipinos, okay? So it's a Noor brand of uh, tamarind soup powder, and you use a little bit of it, you use a teaspoon of it, it's equivalent to using that, okay? And the thing about it is because it's got other stuff like um, seasoning powder, it's quite delicious actually, and it works really, really well. Um, this is fried onion, okay? Like I said earlier, that we're cheating today, but usually if you were doing this the proper way, if you went to my website and looked up this recipe, you will find that I, use, I, I say to use fresh onion, but when I had my restaurant, like I didn't have time to do a lot of onion peeling and, 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 and dicing and whatever, okay? So we got that and then um, what you would typically want to do is you want to use some oil and fry the onion until it's aromatic. You want to uh, fry the onion with the garlic, okay? Fresh garlic until it's aromatic, then you add everything else in, okay? But today we're cheating, we're short uh, circuiting this, we're using fried onion so you don't have to fry it, okay? So tomatoes, okay, a couple of tomatoes here. I'm just gonna cut them into wedges, okay? Uh, I, yeah, for that amount, look, let me just add, add a little bit more, okay? 
you don't want this to end up tasting like tomato soup okay but also you do want to add a little bit of interest in your dal so that it looks a little bit colorful um, and it's got like textures like uh, from the potato and all the other stuff as well these chilies you can add them in whole uh, like I said these uh, were actually bought frozen next time you go shopping at your Indian grocery store have a look in the freezer section you'd be surprised some of the uh, very interesting products you can find over there that can be time savers as well all right so we've got that uh, this is cooking away okay and now let's get on to the dough okay roti chanai uh, dough what is roti chanai roti chanai like I said is a Malaysian flatbread usually eaten for breakfast and in its most common form is eaten with this dal and by the way okay speaking of dal I started out spelling dal d-h-a-l at some point many years later one of my um, one of one of my uh, consultants right she said she's American she said um, that from what she could find online it was usually spelled D-A-H-L so I changed everything to D-A-H-L and then later on you see other people spelling it as just D-A-L okay so D-H-A-L, D-A-H-L, D-A-L they're all dull okay um, but now I've reverted back to spelling it the way I, I spelled it originally which is D-H-A-L okay so uh, I think it really depends on which part of the world you come from but uh, dal is basically the lentil and we're using tor dal like I said if you go looking for tor dal at your Asian grocery store it looks exactly like virtually exactly like uh, chana dal but look for uh, something labeled T-O-O-R or T-O-R um, and you'll be on the right track okay and that seems to be more flavorsome more delicious somehow it works really well with this I don't know if that's what the Indian uh, mamaks in Malaysia use uh, the todal. they use yeah. todal oh well there you go <laughs> I don't know about everyone but I mean a couple of the places we went to in KL at least okay they yeah. use todal see there you go um, and this was actually recommended to me by my Indian staff member who wasn't who had never actually been to Malaysia so she didn't know Rodi Chanai or anything like that okay so I've got my TM5 and I'm going to make my dough, my roti chanai dough in here and what you want to do is you want to weigh some dough in here, okay? So uh, we're going in here. Each thermal mix, certainly the 5 and 6 anyway, uh, comes with built-in scales. The TM6 here, the scale, um, what do you call it? The, the, the what do you call it the units okay oh, yeah. they're smaller okay you can go up by I think by two gram um, increments. increments whereas this one only goes by five gram increments but for this exercise five grams is plenty we're going to weigh in 500 grams of flour okay I'm just using straight out plain flour and we're going to talk about this in a little bit uh, once I've added all the ingredients in we can talk a little bit more about this okay so uh, let me just get 500 grams of plain flour. I've got the, 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 the scales here uh, set on scales and we're going to weigh this. Would you mind getting me the gear um, uh, the So I've got the flour in here, okay, plain flour. Some. So let me take a little bit back out since so it's a bit too much in here. Okay, and then we're going to add some water. And we want about 200 and it really depends on your flour. We can talk a little bit more about this in a second. You want about 250 grams of water, okay? Okay, and then we're going to add a little bit of condensed milk. Of 
followed by a bit of ghee, okay? And this is, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about all these in a minute, so don't stress out too much if you think I'm getting ahead. salt now yeah okay so we're ne kneading this for just three minutes and to do that you just turn it to the kneading function it just says dough right you set it for three minutes and then set it to knead So that's going away. Now, the flour. Okay, when I started making roti chanai, um, it took many, many years and a lot of trial and error to get it right. Okay, and in the process, I talked to a lot of chefs and they all had their own theories about the type of flour. And we're talking about a lot of Malaysian chefs based in Australia. Okay, because back then, you know, uh, 30 years ago, I didn't have the, have the opportunity to travel that much. So you have to go with local knowledge and you're asking around all these other chefs. Um, they suggested, like with Malaysia, the type of flour you use is different to the type of flour you can get a hold of in Australia. That's why your rotunai might not turn out, okay? And I see that same argument made a lot about noodles. You know, the other thing that a lot of people want to nail making are the hand pulled noodles. You see on YouTube a lot, right? And people will go down to the point of like reading the label uh, and finding out the, 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 the composition of uh, gluten in the flour batch that they just bought, right? To figure out if it will work for that particular recipe. And the same thing went with making roti chanai. Okay, just make it look. Okay, so that's still going. Uh, so the same thing went with Brody Chanai. There was a lot of theory about the type of flour, a lot of theory about what made it stretchy and all that. So people would might add egg white. You notice I didn't put any egg white in here. I do put some condensed milk, and that's one of the theories. People say you need condensed milk to help it go stretchy. I do know of actual mamaks who don't use any condensed milk, and their Brody Chanai is also stretchy. But I actually personally do like the flavor of condensed milk, so I'll put it in. Okay, but if you're vegan, you can technically leave it out and you should be okay. You can add a couple of tablespoons of sugar in its place, okay? So let's actually, in the meantime, let me have a look at the potatoes, okay? So the potatoes have been just cooking about 10 minutes. Let me just change the uh, camera angle. Okay, so let's see what it looks like. And do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I know there's uh, one of these things here. I'm not sure. Uh, there do you mind just okay so this is one of the attachments that will come with your thermomix if you buy one okay then open it up you see there you go so it's cooked up the potatoes it's still a little bit firm i can cook it a little bit longer okay but i will be actually cooking it some more with everything else okay so it's not that big a deal if it's not cooked all the way through so let's just keep keep it going for a little bit more and in the meantime if you are making this uh, the roti chanai dough by hand, I did eventually a couple years ago, uh, well maybe about five years ago now, I went to Malaysia and I did a masterclass with an actual mama uh, who actually specialized in making roti chanai, okay? All they did was, uh, all they did was roti chanai. They were hired by the Traders Hotel in Kuala Lumpur as the Rodi Chanai chef and they did that. that, that they had just the one job literally, you know, I see all these memes that like you have one job. He had one job was to make Rodi Chanai and he was such a traditionalist, he insists on making Rodi Chanai by hand, okay? So he had like this entire bench all set up and he would pour out the flour and the water and you know your traditional way of making uh, any kind of like kneaded dough sort of thing you make like a, 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 a like a, a circle of flour and then you add the water and then you knead it and knead it and knead it 
um, it's a lot of work, okay? Whereas with this, you do it for three minutes, this is what you got here, okay? So it's kneaded it for you, it's not ready yet, okay? But instead of kneading it for half an hour, however long by hand and making a big, like needing a lot of space and making a big mess, you do this in your thermal mix, it does it for you beautifully for three minutes and now I'm going to tell my uh, Lenovo smart device, hey Google, set timer for five minutes, okay, five or ten minutes, okay, what we're going to do is let it rest for five minutes, okay, so we're going to let it rest and do its thing. And in the meantime, like I said, these are the ingredients. You're going to get a little bit of oil. Paul, would you be able to get me a bit of oil? In fact, you know what? I'm just going to cheat and use some of your ghee. Yeah, go. Uh, ghee is expensive, you know, guys. Especially and, you know, the good ghee we get. Yeah, the good ghee we get. This is uh, Paul's, uh, Paul's contribution to our household. So it's his ghee. Everything I buy is our stuff. Everything he buys, uh, this is Paul's ghee, all right? But this is expensive ghee because he's white and he's uh, posh. Privileged, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is New Zealand ghee, but you know what when you eat roti chalai here in Sydney There are a couple of places where they make their own roti chalai now uh, But do you think they're using ghee? No, they're using like vegetable oil, right? Mm. Uh, or they might use margarine oh. or something. That's a great thing about being able to make your own stuff You know, that's why when I make roti chalai, you know, I'm feeding my own family. I like ghee, right? I like ghee, I like butter and all this sort of like Homeless natural stuff yeah, that's kind of obvious. <laughs> So I'm using ghee for my roti chalai and I'm using ghee for my cooking and whatever else. Okay, so let's stop this Okay, so while that's resting for five minutes, we're gonna go back to this Okay are we opening up? Are we done? Okay, it's just cooling down. Sorry, yeah. It's, there are some safety measures built into these thermal mixers that I still have to wrap my head around. Okay, so sometimes they don't um, they don't work on my <laughs> at my speed and whatever else. Okay, my level of impatience. Okay, so this has been boiling for 10, uh, 10 minutes plus. Okay, so what we're going to do. We're going to take out, what did I do with that thing? Okay, take this out. And I'm sure there's a, a, a smarter way to do this, but again, like I said, you know, uh, some of you guys are going to tell me, this is not how you use this, Jackie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, like I said, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, look, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, strain out the water, okay? This is the water that was used to boil the potato, so it's good water, okay? I'm going to strain this out. And we're going to take this out. I am so lame with this. Okay, so we're going to take this out. Okay. And that's my potatoes. And then we're going to use this bowl again. Okay. So if you were using fresh onion in particular, what you're going to want to do, you're going to add some oil. We're going to use a little bit of ghee this time. In here. And then you're going to chuck in your onion and your garlic and you're going to fry it, saute it, okay? And you know, I was thinking just this morning, um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if you guys watch my Street Food Journeys episode on how to make laksa Sarawak by Datin Suraya in Malaysia. And Datin Suraya is from Sarawak. And I watched while she was making, um, she was showing us how she makes her amazing. Laksa Sarawak and the one thing that kept she kept coming back to was you have to stand over the stove and stir it for a long time You cannot let it come to a boil. Okay, so that's why you have to keep stirring if it comes to a boil It will ruin the flavor it will ruin the coconut milk and everything will just be messed up So you have to stand and stir it 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 And I was thinking you know what I can't wait to try making that in the thermomix because in the thermomix you don't have to worry about coming to a boil if you preset the temperature, okay? A boiling temperature, 100 degrees, you can set it to 90 degrees, 85 degrees, right? And let it do its thing. There you go. Something to think about. I haven't tried it yet. And that's why we're doing this series. This uh, TM6 is very, very new to me. Uh, I've only had it for a couple of weeks at this time. Uh, I've only used it for a couple of weeks at this time. I bought it a little bit earlier and just sat in the box for the longest time. Um, so I'm still discovering like ways to use it. I'm still trying to figure out uh, out-of-the-box ways to be able to 
get you know to 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 use it for Malaysian cooking okay which is why I'm doing this series so that you guys can like you know put your hand up and say hey I'm in, I'm interested to find out more and if you're based in Australia in particular you know um, because I am now a Thermomix consultant Right? You can talk to me about picking up your own Thermomix as well if you don't already have a consultant that looks after your area, okay? So your, you know, your account, okay? So I've put in the oil, I'm going to put in like the onion, okay? We're going to pretend this is a fresh onion, but it's not obviously. This is a fried onion, so it only takes a couple of minutes, okay? And then we're going to add the dried garlic, let's pretend it's fresh garlic, okay? So these two, you're going to add it in with the oil or ghee in this case. And we're gonna fry this, okay? And we're gonna set it to. <laughs> Stop. Uh, that's the timer going up, okay? So this is stirring, okay? It's, it's going to heat up and it's going to stir and it's going to cook, okay? And if you have like your fresh onion and fresh garlic, you wanna set the timer for a little bit longer, however long it takes, like 10 minutes for it to fry and saute it till it, you know, is flavorsome and all that. Or, you know, otherwise do what I do. I'm just showing you how I would do it, but it's a little bit redundant, okay? But, okay, so 10 minutes, 5 minutes is uh, out, okay? The dough needs time to rest. That's why we told it to set the timer for 5 minutes. 5 minutes later, the dough has rested a bit, okay? And we're going to knead it again, okay? So, I'm going to put it back on the external mix. And this time I'm going to knead it for two minutes, okay? Um, it's an element of agar, agar here. Depending on the kind of flour you use, it might behave a little bit differently, okay? Now, I'm using plain flour today, like I said. Uh, plain Australian flour, the same stuff that you would pick up at Woody's or Aldi or whatever. In the past, I have used bread flour, okay? And then other times I have used half and half bread flour and plain flour. What's the difference between bread flour and plain flour? Is the level of gluten, okay? But my point is, um, the, basically the more gluten it is, the more stretchy your dough would be, okay? But also the more water it will need, okay? So my recipe I'm gonna give you is what I'm using using plain flour. If you're, using, if you're going to use high gluten flour like bread flour, Add a little bit of water, okay? If you're gonna use a weaker, like less gluten-y uh, flour, you may need to use less water, okay? Um, so, this is saute, let's just stop it, okay? That's what it looks like now. So it smells very uh, buttery y ish And now, we're going to add everything else in here, okay? So we've got the, the lentils that have been soaking. I'm gonna add it in. Probably a bit too much here, yeah? but might be okay. Okay. So in this goes. And in goes the potatoes. Right. The water. I'm doing a lot of agar agar in here today, okay? When I cook savouries, I do, a, I do a lot of guesstimating. I don't measure things that accurately, okay? So, the tamarind concentrate. You can add more tamarind later on. And if you don't have tamarind, the whole point of tamarind is to give it that nice, slightly sour note to it, okay? If you don't have tamarind, in the end, maybe a, a dash or two of like lemon juice will help as well. Remember the asfatida? Okay, so the dough is done. Okay, we'll get back to it in a minute. Okay, asfatida has a very unique smell, um, and a lot of vegan Australians use it as a garlic substitute. Apparently, there's some vegans who, you know, vegans have a lot of like uh, different criteria within the whole it's space not a, of veganism. It's not open yet. Okay, all right, just so we'll just punch a hole in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so some of them can't eat garlic, all right? So they use asfatida as a garlic substitute because it's got a, a, a kind of like a very pungent smell, okay? I use but I use garlic and I add asfatida as well. Okay, all these spices. I thought it was for the egginess. 
as well. Mm, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I was told by a vegan store that they usually use it as a garlic substitute. I use both. Okay, so mustard seeds, cumin, turmeric, salt, fenugreek. Okay, these are all going in. Okay. And gonna add the chilies in. Oh, it comes off. <laughs> yeah. I put a punch on. Here you go. Yeah, I'll swallow that now. Ask for tita. Okay, you just want a really small amount. Yeah, okay. You don't want to drown out everything else with the asphatida. So all of that, am I missing something? I'm going to throw in the curry leaves as well, okay? So you can put the whole stalk in or you can just kind of like put these in. And I'm going to add the tomatoes but a little bit later on, right? So this goes in here. And let's just stir it around a little bit. This is what we got. We're gonna get this to cook it for us okay so you don't have to stand over the stove and watch it or whatever let's just cook it for uh, yeah I don't want to say the time because like I said I'm very aga aga okay if I, after 20 minutes I think it looks fine I will stop it okay if I think that the lentils need a little bit more cooking I'll, I'll let it keep going uh, mushroom seasoning okay let's chuck that in as well and this is a little bit this is a Jackie M thing, okay? Your typical Rudy Chanai mama will not be adding mushroom seasoning <laughs> into their dal dip. Okay, um, now while we're on the topic of uh, dal, right? I, I used to actually sell this dal as a frozen meal as well, okay? When I sell it as a frozen meal, Australians are attracted to, I mean, those who are vegans and vegetarian, uh, when they, I, I used to produce a range of frozen meals. When they looked for my range of frozen meals, whether they're vegan or not, right? They want to buy a vegan slash vegetarian option, uh, you know, for especially if they're feeding family and friends who may be uh, vegan or vegetarian. Now, so, uh, vegans and vegetarians or Australians in general, when they eat lentils, they expect to eat it with a fork. And he asks, can we use dried curry leaves? Yeah, you can use dried curry leaves. As with everything, um, you know, fresh is always best. But if you don't have fresh, dry. Yeah, uh, that's what I tell people. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Australians expect to eat lentils with a fork. Okay, they expect it to be quite thick. Um, we in Malaysia, when we eat uh, the dal dip, right, the lentil dip with our roti chana, it's like a soup. Okay, it's like you know. It's like at the end of this, I kind of like blitz it a little bit so that the the lentils are a bit more crushed, right? But Paul, you remember the roti canai in Malaysia, the dip that comes with it? It's not it's not something you can eat with a fork, is it? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 I like mean, a, you could eat it with a fork, but you'll be there all day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, need a, you need a straw for it, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my, my point is that there's no right or wrong way to do this, really. I don't like to say this is it and that's it, okay? So if you're feeding Australians or if you personally prefer your dal to be quite thick, so sometimes when you see photos of my dal and they look, they look quite thick, that's because I'm feeding Aussies, okay? And I'm also partly because, you know, I get Aussies get really upset when you give them something soup like almost like a like a pumpkin soup texture mm -hmm. puree yeah puree. like puree thing they're like oh well, I, I thought i was paying for like a a a, a, a you know a dal meal not like a, a pumpkin soup looking thing you know so yeah it's up to you how you want to present it but the flavor's there the flavor's the same okay that's my point so if you want it more runny add more water blitz a little bit so that it's a more puree if you don't you know then keep it lumpy like a, a lentil okay if you want you can even go and evoke cuisine and blend it completely and <laughs> dollop it on with fancy lines. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right. Not in my house, but you can do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, so let's get um, uh, I'm going to be a little bit complicated here, Paul. Yes. Would I be able to get you to, uh, best you can, bring this over here? Yeah. I've got like a metal sheet over on this side, but it's got a ton of stuff over it. But we're going to move it over because we're going to do the roti chanai, okay? 
so let's just... Oh, don't worry, I'll get it. Just okay, Paul's going to sort this out. Let me just clean this up a little bit, so thanks for bearing with us. And by the way, guys, don't forget, if you know anyone who might be interested in this content, please share it out with them, okay? Um, the other thing I want to mention is that I have people who pay to learn from me. Um, so this series is actually very special uh, in the sense that I'm showing you from start to finish how I would do this, which is something that usually people will pay to learn. Okay, so I don't know how long I'm going to keep this content up online for. Okay, so if you know someone who's interested to watch it, uh, get them to watch the replay quickly before it gets pulled down at some point because I would actually repackage them into content that people would buy to learn. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. While you can, is what I'm saying, um, grab the information and make the most use of it. Okay, so here we go. Let me just put this. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we've got this now. Oh, good. Oops. <laughs> okay, so let me just. You can still hear the thermomix. <laughs> yeah, you can still hear the thermomix. Let's just bring it a little bit closer. You've got enough space to work with. Yeah, yeah, it should be okay. It's going to go the same for us. Uh, yeah. So this has needed for a total of five minutes with a five minute rest in between. Three minutes, rested five minutes, three, uh, two more minutes. So this is how long it's been going for. And this is what it looks like okay let me just take it out and the, the, the other difference about between the five and the six is that the six actually has a pre-wash function which is fantastic because it means that when you've got some okay first of all when you've got some dough stuck in between the blades at the bottom what you can do is use the turbo function which is going to cause this to spin really really fast to push out the residual dough to the sides of this bowl. Okay, so we're going to do that. So it went on turbo for one second. Okay, you see all this has been pushed out. Okay, and like I said, the TM6 has one extra function, which is that after this, you can chuck some water in here, a little bit of detergent, a little bit of bicarbonate soda if you like, and then put it on the pre-wash fun function, and then what it does is that it washes it for you, okay? And then what you'll end up with is a virtually clean bowl, and then you just need to rinse it and give it a quick once over at the sink, okay? So you're not trying to scrub it and trying to get to all the, uh, you know, hard to reach places okay so the pre-wash function has lots of different options as well you can select you know what you want to wash you know whether you were using it for frying or using it for dough or using it for something else okay so this is my uh, Rudy Chan I dough okay this is what it looks like and what I want to do is I want to divide this into equal portions okay and the way you do it is just grab it and twist it get a lump okay now uh, my knowledge and my uh, skill set in terms of Malaysian cooking is constantly evolving even when I, when I started going live like 10 plus years ago um, what I was teaching people back then may be a little bit different to what I would do how I would do it today okay but nonetheless after you have uh, divided this into portions what I'll show you to do is how to boil it up okay This is a very nice soft batch, okay? You notice I'm not running flour through it, okay? We don't want flour to be, we don't want to coat this with flour and make more mess. So what you want to do now, these here, is you want to round them up. And the way you do it is you just use your thumb, right? And just press in the middle and then use your other thumb to just kind of like fold it into itself, okay? So what you're going to end up with is a smooth surface over here. And you're just going to fold it up and voila, that's your smooth, crease-free ball of dough. This is very important if you're making roti canai, it has to be crease-free, okay? Otherwise, 
you're going to have trouble for the next step okay take my word for it <laughs> okay so roll 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 uh, uh, kind of like push 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 all the sides into the middle roll it up and voila okay and this is how they look okay and this is the before so push 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 okay and roll it up there you go and push 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 there you go okay same with this okay and push 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 okay so this is just cooking away yeah so we've got all these balls and then what we do is we coat it with ghee again all right so you coat it with ghee and then you're going to let it rest now uh, the reason you're going to let it rest is that dough that's newly done okay is going to be very tense right uh, if you let it rest it's going to be relaxed and when it's relaxed it's easy for you to kind of like thin out and then to flip if it's very tense every time you try and flip it it'll just try and fight you and shrink back and then it might tear and all that okay so you need to let this rest for look everybody's different like you know weather conditions will affect it if you're doing this in the middle of winter in a really dry country you may need to let it rest a long time uh, if you're doing this in a hot humid country like Malaysia uh, you know shorter time frame is fine uh, but having said that um, there is a window within which you need to use it up okay if you let it rest for too long if you let it rest for two days it will ruin okay because it will be too relaxed and everything will start to kind of like lose its texture and stretchiness okay so generally the advice is let it rest for two hours to eight hours okay Let me put some gloves on. Okay, here we go. We just coat it with ghee, generous amount of ghee or butter. And the Thermomix, by the way, the cookie do has a recipe for making your own ghee if you so happen to find yourself at home with lots and lots of blocks of butter but no ghee okay but technically for this recipe at least anyway you can actually just use butter as well okay just keep in mind you're going to be grilling you're going to be cooking this on a hot pan uh, and uh, butter does burn more easily okay so coat this completely with ghee cover it and set it aside and you're going to let it rest till it's relaxed so right now the way it is when I press it down, okay, it's going to be a little bit more tense. I'm not doing a very good job of proving this, but right now it's a bit more tense. Uh, in a couple of hours, it'll be more relaxed and it'll let me stretch it more easily, okay? So that's that. And guess what? Um, I made some earlier, so you don't have to wait around with me for two hours. Like I said, we all have oh, things to do. I don't to wait around for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is something I did a couple of hours ago, earlier today. And you know what, while we're doing this, I'm going to actually, you see this is steaming very well along. Let me just stop this for a second and I'm going to open this up. Let me just open the lid without incriminating myself by doing something I shouldn't be doing. Okay, let me just open the lid here. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> okay. This is what it looks like right now, okay? You see? It'll even look like the real thing. <laughs> okay, we're gonna chuck in the tomatoes, right? And I'll put some more. Okay, what did I do with the lid? Here, here it is. Thank you. Okay, so we're just gonna cover this. And let it cook some more. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Now we've got our roti chanai. Just going to clean this up a little bit. Okay. 
like I said, this is what I made earlier, okay? It's still actually a little bit firm. Um, but we're going to try and flip it, okay? So we've got the Onimoki. Just bring this over. Okay, that's my gi. And then you want to just flatten this, okay? And I have to admit, I didn't quite use enough water in that particular batch, although this new one will be much better. Uh, this particular batch, again, like I said, different types of flour will behave a little bit different, okay? So you've got to figure out your favorite brand and the ratios to go with it, okay? How did you but, know the roti was almost ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So what do you want to do? <laughs> you want to flip this. Oopsies! <laughs> you want to flip this next? <laughs> Here he comes, okay? He knows. Okay. And you want to flip this and flip it and flip it till it's super, super thin, okay? Until Noah approves. <laughs> yeah, until Noah approves. Here you go. So. Okay, so we got the dough, right? Here you go. And you're going to stretch it a little bit more if you want. I'm running out of space here a little bit because I've got my Thermomix here and I've got my laptop keyboard over here. I don't necessarily don't want to get my keyboard. Uh, you know, contaminated with gear. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Right, and get stretching it some more. And the way you uh, the way you flip the roti, right? Uh, first, uh, let, let's go through it with the second piece of dough. Okay, so you see this? You can actually get it even thinner. And of course, this is the plain roti that we're going to eat with dough. Uh, you can be fancy, you can add stuff to it, you can add onion uh, slices, you can add egg, you can add, uh, you know, you can make sweet ones. So you can add minced curry and stuff like that, turn it into a motaba. Uh You can add, uh, you know, make it sweet and add like maybe banana slices, you know, so that you can make a banana roti with that. Uh, lots and lots of different things you can do with this roti dough. Okay, so there you go, that's your first roti. Set it aside, okay? Okay, let's do the next one. How do you flip roti, okay? So you got the roti dough here, okay? And I'm gonna go through this very, very quickly. Obviously, you know, you were learning from me in person, I would guide you a bit better, but this is something uh, a little bit hard to translate, I think, sort of thing on camera sometimes. What you wanna do, basically, is you wanna flatten the dough, okay? And you wanna flatten it, so that is thin, especially on the sides, okay? A lot of people, when they flatten the dough, they flatten the middle, so it's very, very thin in the middle, but still a thick, uh, you know, with thick edges, and that's gonna ruin it, okay? Because when you flip it, you gotta think about the momentum, you gotta think about how, um, you know, the weight transfer and all that works, okay? So you want to make sure that it's not so thick on the outside that when you flip it, um, the, 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 the weight of the, uh, the edges of the dough is gonna kind of get pushed out and cause you to make a big giant hole in the middle, okay? So first of all, flatten it, okay? Really lay it out thin, and then you want, if you're right-handed like me, your left hand goes on top, and your right hand goes on the bottom, okay? Right? And then, you want to, think of your elbow, make a figure eight with your elbow, okay? Your elbow, your right elbow, go, go, no, figure eight, like, uh, do like that, okay? <laughs> Here we go, go like that and like that, okay? Your, uh, your, your top hand is going to mostly just be kind of like holding it in place. And you wanna move around the perimeter of the dough, okay? So, because if you keep flipping on one side, uh, it's not gonna be evenly like weight distributed and it's going to be too thick on one side and too thin on the other and it's going to tear, okay? So, it's just tearing a little bit now. But this is basically what you want to do. Just keep moving, moving, moving around and pulling, 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 okay? Now, um, let's go and ahead and just stretch the last bit here instead of trying to flip it some more, okay? Because like I said, the more you flip it, the thinner it gets and the more space you need, okay? 
and you can obviously I'm using a, uh, a stainless steel sheet over here I don't even remember where I got a hold of it but you can just do this on your kitchen bench right it's not big a deal that big a deal um, okay so stretch 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 okay stretch 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 and you can technically get it even thinner okay like I said this is not my best work I have been able to get it much thinner in the past but today's dough is a little bit finicky okay so fold it up and fold it up now if the whole flipping thing is lost on you okay don't despair you can actually do this without flipping but just by stretching okay so again same deal press 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 flatten 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 okay and then what we're going to do is just pull it uh, just be very gentle both hands underneath this time use your fingers and just gently stretch it okay and stretch it stretch it you see it's just stretching okay you, you, you won't get it quite as thin as if you were flipping it but it's a good start all right just stretch 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 and in particular if you're making motabak which is the filled roti you know filled with uh, egg and with uh, minced dry minced curry um, you can get away with just pulling it okay because motabak generally uh, holds up better with the dough being not too incredibly like translucent thin okay because because of the weight of the motorbike you may end up actually tearing it okay so stretch 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 not quite as thin but adequate okay so there you go but i'm going to actually just quickly flip it <laughs> okay here we go just flip it just to give it that a little bit more stretchiness okay so there you go and then you just got to cook these up which we'll do very very quickly because we are coming up to the hour mark and we have Paul and I and Noah have, <laughs> have to have an appointment <laughs> yeah, with a brisket uh, it's Christmas coming up we are actually going to be making brisket for family Christmas lunch and we need to run out and buy the brisket after this okay so let me just quickly clean my hands in the meantime I'll get Paul yes. if you don't mind coming over and pulling this thing out of the way so I can use the stove here so let me wash my hands in a minute and here we go where do you want it? I'll uh, get back to where it was before it's fine. Okay. Everything you probably should not do with the thing on Yeah. I think <laughs> this should be done, really. Okay, so let's just stop this. Just do it tilt up quickly. Yeah. Get this yeah. Okay, I haven't used this stove for the longest time, but I'm going to use it today. Turn it on. You know what? Is it? Yeah, here we go. Turn it on. Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to cook the roti here. And let me just take out the dal. It's looking like it's done. Okay. Let me just taste test this. Mm -hmm. Probably use a little bit more salt. I'm gonna add that in. Mm. Okay, a little bit more salt in here. No, we don't touch it, baby. Bye. Careful, careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So this is my dal. Okay. You can cook it a little bit longer if you want. 
but we'll put it aside for the moment because we're going to cook the roti. It's not, not cooked. <laughs> Let me just add a little bit of gear here. Paul, would you mind getting me a pair of tongs, please? Sure thing. And I'm going to add the. I'm going to use some of the gear from here. There you go, American football. So that yeah. batch of dough, that particular recipe, will make you about, depending on the size of your roti, maybe about seven, seven like serves of roti chanai. Okay, so we're going to cook this up. Uh, yeah, cool. Sorry, Either. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can I get also a lid for this? Do you have a lid for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just going to cook this up. Obviously, in Malaysia, they will cook this on a hot, <laughs> hot plate on a griddle. Okay, I'm just cooking this in a frying pan at the moment. And let's clean this up. Let's <laughs> take out some of the. This is the right size. Yeah. Just okay. And the way I like to do it is, I like to actually cover it. I know, I know they don't, have, they don't do that in Malaysia, but it speeds things up for me over here at least anyway. Okay. Let's wipe this down a little bit. Okay, so that's my lentil dip. I'll take photos and post them in the WhatsApp group and also online in a little bit. I'm just cooking this up. Now, as far as the temperature for cooking this, um, you want it to be in the mid-range, okay? You don't want it too hot because there are lots and lots of layers of dough here, pastry here, right? If it's too hot, you'll end up burning the outside and it'll still be raw in the middle. You have it like not hot enough, it's going to take too long to cook and it will actually toughen up your roti chanai, okay? So just try and strike a, a, a balance between having it too tough and having it burnt and undercooked under the, in the middle, okay? And of course, like in a lot of places, they would use vegetable oil to cook this with or they'll use margarine, okay? Doing this at home yourself, you can use ghee, okay? All the nice stuff. And Obviously, if you're vegan, you can use something else. Maybe you can try vegetable. Uh, vegan ghee. Vegan ghee, apparently. I've never tried it. Um, or you can try uh, coconut oil. I don't know how much it will change the flavor. I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So this is going to cook up and we're going to get a plate to serve this up with. Really? Yeah. Vegan, yeah. Ghee. Um, vegan ghee is made from uh, palm oil. So okay. It's like a uh, frigid taste. Sure. Cool. So according to Paul, vegan ghee, he thinks it's made with palm oil. Not all palm oil is eating palm oil, alright? Uh, there's some palm oil that's actually healthy for you and also environment, you know, uh, cook, uh, sorry, Noah's just messing up my, <laughs> Noah's just messing up my roti dough, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to turn down the temperature here a little bit and cook this some more. <laughs> yeah, no one had vacation care until today, but they're they're all on a on Christmas break now, so that's why he's home with us and uh, trying to put his mark on this broadcast. Okay, <laughs> so this is what this first one looks like. We're gonna cook another one, and then we're gonna take some photos, wrap up, and wish everyone a merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, so next one, okay? I'll turn down the heat a little bit. I cranked it up to the max heat to get the stove going. That turned out to be uh, probably like, you know what I say, do what I say, not what I do. Don't cook it on too high. Okay, so this is your done roti, right? What you want to do in Malaysia is they would just clap it, okay? Clap it to just kind of like let out the steam so that it doesn't go all soggy and hard, okay? I am not right. Vegan ghee is made from coconut oil and guava leaves. Coconut oil and guava leaves. There you go. That's uh, Paul's been uh, corrected here. <laughs> okay, look, this is beautiful, right? You can see it. I'm cooking this on temperature seven. Mm. I'll bring it down to six 
because my stove is quite strong here. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but nonetheless, like not all palm oil is bad for you. Some palm oil, you know, that uh, is actually grown in environmentally like certified and sustainable plantations. I've visited one in my time in Malaysia. And also the palm oil is actually healthy, okay? Yeah, palm oil is actually the healthiest uh, vegetable oil you can get. See, there you go. Yeah. That's coming from Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It's just the farming practices that are questionable, mm. but Malaysian farming practices are good. Yeah, Malaysian farming practices apparently are good. Okay, some people mistake palm oil plantations in other parts of the world and equate them with Malaysian palm oil plantations. You know, for instance, Malaysian the Mal Malaysian Peninsula does not actually have orangutans, okay? But people always complain about oh, palm oil plant. You've got so many palm oil plantations, you're killing off the orangutan plant. Uh, um, population in the Malaysian Peninsula. Malaysian Peninsula only in <laughs> All right, yeah, they're only in Borneo, Malaysia, which is a different land mass altogether. Okay. And you do get palm oil ghee, but it's not as big as the coconut. Okay, there you go. You do get palm oil ghee, but not as coconut oil palm palm oil. There you go. So two pieces of roti canai, some dal. I'm gonna present this a little bit better, and uh, Paul. You want to come try this? I, I want to try this. You know who really wants to try this. <laughs> no, you want to try this. Okay. Here you go. See that ready. Here you go. Alright. Yeah. Gonna dip it in some ghee here. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try this one? <laughs> <laughs> All talk and no bite. Yeah. Here you go. Mm. Okay. There you go. This is going to be our dinner tonight. So thank you so much guys. Um, have a blessed Christmas and New Year. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, don't forget to share this out. Uh, if you haven't already, join my WhatsApp group. Just ask us for the link. We'll send it to you so that you don't miss any of our content and you get to vote on what you want me to cook next, okay? So that's, uh, this was actually, we're doing Roti Chana today because you guys in my tiny little WhatsApp community actually voted for me to do Roti Chana today. So there you go. Um, anyway, thanks again. Have a safe and um, blessed Christmas and New Year. And I look forward to seeing you. You know, actually, I might be able to do, go live again next week. We'll see how we go for time yeah. anyway. But I'll keep you all posted. All right. Thanks again. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, let's have a look. Oops, Did it stop? Did it stop? I see anything here.